Hello and welcome to IDX TV. I'm Hannah Jackson and I'm here at the Retail Supply Chain and Logistics Expo 2023 at the Excel in London. And I'm here with Tom Seddon, who is the event director. Tom, lovely to have you and be back after last year. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, it's really great to be here. Honestly, it's so busy today. I was just about to say, first day, super busy already. Is it what you're expecting? It's exceeded any expectation I had, honestly. Like, last year was good, this year's just you know, we're taking the roof off, so. That is what we want to hear, fantastic news. All right, now you work at Fortum International. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your role there and how that aligns with RSCL? Yes, yeah, so um, I run the show. Um, I've got a engineering background, so it, it matches up really well with all the logistics guys, especially the automation side of things. Um, make sure all the clients are happy. We get these, you know, build ideas, and bring them to life, and then, you know, make sure everybody, like all the visitors that come down to the event are, you know who we need to come so it's it's good now there have already been quite a few interesting talks so far is there anyone that you're particularly interested in seeing or any highlights any topics that you're really keen to think uh, see yeah absolutely so um you've got damien skinner from high robotics i don't know if you saw they've got their pick and pack robot I over did, there yeah. it's <laughs> like eight meters tall and that's just about warehouse automation and how to do it efficiently and, and, and well and then uh, staff and person from sip They've got a really clever system that uh, uses a camera to track parcels, identifies whether it's the correct parcel or the incorrect parcel, and it does it all automatically for you. So that's uh, really, really interesting to learn about. Fascinating. There's always something new as well, isn't yeah. there? It's yeah, always yeah. so exciting. All right, Tom, let's talk about sustainability. Now, what are the trends that you're seeing in the industry that could help companies hit their ESG credentials? So in terms of sustainability, a lot of people are focusing very much on their carbon footprint, not necessarily trying to eliminate the carbon footprint altogether, but how to offset it correctly. So without getting into a very long debate, um, electric vehicles are good for the environment, but they do produce an amount of CO2 to, to actually come to fruition. And it's how they can look at other ways to overcome that. So whether that's planting trees or whether that's looking at using automation within a warehouse so they don't have to use power or heating for the workers. Uh, there's various ways around it. And then you've got people like Roland from Delivery Match who have uh, like supply chain software. So you can actually track the carbon footprint from the manufacturer all the way to the last mile. And that really helps to identify key areas that they could improve as well. So, And, and this is the way it's going now. Everyone needs yeah. to be looking at improving that oh, because yeah. it's only going to get more about sustainability. I'm sure we'll be talking about this even more next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's, it's, it's a huge focus of the event. And there's so many people that are at the show that are focusing on it now. And, everybody's talking about it and it's not just sort of being brushed on the carpet anymore you know it, it's out there we need to discuss it we need to do something so as we should be <laughs> very very good uh, now um, when companies come to an event like this what do you think are the key things that they should be looking to achieve while they're actually here so in terms of an attendees uh, perspective they should be speaking to people that are relevant for them so they should have an idea of what they're coming to the show for do a little bit of due diligence before the event after looking at automation, identify the people in automation, discuss really in depth what their projects look like and, and how they can progress with that and see who is the correct person to carry on that conversation with. A lot of the time with the automation projects, they could almost, they take years to complete. So it's really good that they can come to an event like this and identify four or five different people that can build that project and go through that with them on the floor. It saves them a lot of time in the, in the planning aspects. So using that networking hat, putting that on before yeah. you even get here. Yeah, yeah. yeah Got it, absolutely. okay. So what's your main aim at an event like this? My main aim uh, is to make sure all of my exhibitors and clients meet the correct people. So whether that's the big companies that they're going after, Amazon, M&S, Hugo Boss, um, but also to, to help startups in their journey, you know, for, into the, this crazy world, you know. Um, <laughs> And it's good that we can represent both sides of the coin yeah. because these startups eventually will grow into the size of the other companies. And it's just about doing business on the floor, making sure the clients do as much of a return of investment as possible, and really just strengthening the industry and educating. I could go on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd love to listen to it. No, but speaking of startups, I mean, it's just such a hugely expanding world very, very yeah. quickly, you know, particularly post pandemic. Yeah. So there's so much room there for expansion with them. Yeah, 100%. You've got startups that have 
seen this boom in e-commerce and gone, you know, I want a slice of that pie. They come to an event like this and find out, oh, this is actually really easy to get into. Yeah. There's everybody here I need to speak to. And I always say this, it's, it's anyone can sell anything online, but if you haven't got anyone that can ship it, you're never going to get a sale. So There you go, exactly. <laughs> well, now, look, they're, they're the good bits of, yeah. if you can call them good bits or silver linings of, you know, the last few years that we've had, yeah. because it has caused a huge amount of disruption within 100%. the industry. Yeah. So what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've had to face as a result of COVID? Um, biggest challenges, I'd probably say um, people still being a bit, I want, I, don't, I want to say scared, but it's the wrong word. Cautious. Cautious to come back to events like this with all of these people. And I, the biggest challenge is to keep up with the innovations, keep up with the technology. The, the e-commerce boom has gone as big as it has, and we've not, we won't be able to support it when the pandemic was here. So we're like trying to catch up to it now, and it's that, that that's been yeah. really challenging. So yeah. it's it's good that we got to this point, and you know, I'm I'm really really happy. So. I mean, you wouldn't know. It's so busy here today. Yeah. It's oh, wow. basically, it was, it's more busy than it was pre-COVID. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Brilliant. So what do you think it is about RSCL that makes it such a standout event in the industry? So within the industry, there's various other logistics shows, and they're good. Um, but the Retail Supply Chain Logistics Expo focuses on that vertical of e-commerce logistics and the logistics of e-commerce. Um, and it's the only show that does focus in that area. So whether you're a small startup, you can come here, find a fulfillment partner who will fulfill your parcels, or whether you're actually one of the bigger companies, like I mentioned before, looking to automate a warehouse, you know, everything is covered. And there's even like noise technologies, they've got small um, fulfillment centers. So even the small startups that only would need a little eight by five meter fulfillment center, yeah. they can have that technology. So it just, just stands out because no one focuses on that area. Well, it means it's accessible for everyone, isn't it, as yeah. well? Yeah. Perfect. Um, now, what do you think about having media partners and platforms like IDX TV at events like this? I mean, how does it benefit attendees? Um, you know, this is something we could talk about for hours as well, but I mean, the possibilities are endless. Having stuff videoed in such good um, professional manner and having be able to review the show after the event, say a key decision maker wasn't able to attend, they can look through what the media partners have, have you know, made yeah. the content and go oh yeah that was really good and still get a feel for the event even though they weren't here and obviously social media is crazy nowadays everybody wants to see it everybody wants to you know be a part of it so i'd say they're probably one of the most important things with a show like this yeah good to hear now if you could describe the event and the expo so far in three words what would they be sustainable automated delivery Wow, he was right there. Love that. Very good three words. Well, thank you so much, Tom. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to let you go and uh, enjoy the rest of the expo. I'm sure you're going to be very busy for yes. the next two days. Yeah, very busy. So thank you again. And thank you for watching IDX TV.